Uh, how has training gone so far for yourself? And how is preparation ahead of this uh, this big fight in Dublin? Yeah, training has gone really well. I've been uh, been flat out all year, really. I've had a fight in uh, March, fight in August, and now I'm fighting now. So there's not there hasn't been much time in between my last one to this one. So really, I've not taken the foot off the pedal. I've been active all year. So I, I can't even say it's just my preparation for this fight has been good. My preparation all year has been good because I've just been you know, constantly in the gym and, and uh, improving from, from from January to now. So I'm really just looking forward to getting in and having the fight and capping off the year with a nice nice win in my hometown with all my friends and family there. And, and you know, getting the chance to do it on, in the main event slot is, is even sweeter. But preparation has been solid, as always. Um, I'm really feeling like I'm, I'm um, you know, coming into my most complete form of mixed martial artist uh that I've ever been, you know what I mean? I, I, I really feel now I'm so comfortable in all areas of the cage and you know I'm really looking forward to showing that on uh next Friday night. You know, based on all the things you've just said that doesn't sound good for your opponent Dimitri. How do you how do you rate him ahead of this fight? Yeah, to be honest, man, I, I don't know how I rate him because I haven't seen too much footage of him. He's uh, he's a tricky one to find footage of. I'll give him that, you know what I mean? So he's doing well to, to hide his skills. Um, I had a quick look online and I was so, seeing stuff from like three, four years ago. So it's kind of hard to have a real representation of skill from three years ago because a lot can change in three years. Um, but then I had a scan of his Instagram just to see if I could see anything and you're, you're just catching the best bits and the highlights so you're not really seeing mistakes or flaws and you're just seeing him winning so like obviously you, you can't really you, you, you can't really base anything off it but what I've seen of him I think he looks like more of a striker than anything he's long and lanky and has a bit of range and I think he's going to be trying to use that to his best uh, advantage against me on the night so I'm just open my preparation. I've been just inspiring taller guys, longer guys, kind of heavier guys, and um, yeah, I'm just gonna go in and on the night do what I got do what I do best, which is just mince this fella and I'll make mince meat of him. And um, I don't really dim my light to let any other light shine brighter. I know he he's coming to you know take a big opportunity, beat the hometown guy, and you know really establish himself as a as a fighter on a big stage. So. Now I have to respect that and I have to respect that he's going to be coming to win. And the least, and I, whatever about skills, the least I can expect him to be is game, you know. So, but regardless of opponents, like I always say, you know, he could he could get injured on Monday and I'll have to fight someone else. So it's just the best, the best thing I can do is just be in the best shape physically and mentally I can be in and have my my, my skill set sharp enough to fight anyone, any any level any skills set, any style, whatever it is, you know what I mean? And I feel like I'm, I'm, I've, I've done just that. I'm sharp, I'm mentally prepared, my weight is solid. Everything I can control, I've controlled perfectly and all I can do now is 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 smash this fella up on the night. You know, as you said before, you're going to be fighting in Dublin, your hometown. You've already fought at MSG, so 2023 has been absolutely class. But what about 2024? What what kind of things do you want to achieve next year and, and looking ahead you know, to the near future? Um, next year I just want to be active like I was this year if we can get three fights in again next year I'll be really happy for if even would be even better um, providing uh, the body holds up and I can do four um, but ultimately um, once I win this fight I think doors will open for me and and big opportunities might come my way if the, I don't know if they want to put me into the million dollar season next year or if they're going to build me up around Europe a little bit before they put me into the season I'm not too sure, but all I know is that all I can control is winning this fight. Like I said, I'm excuse me. On the main event, I have um all the pressure on me. You know, I'm, this is a fight on paper. I, I'm technically supposed to win. You know what I mean? All that jazz that goes with it. This is the highest pressure situation PFL could have given me at this point in my career. So when I win this one, and and I show them that given me this situation, put me under this pressure and, and I still I still rise up to the occasion, I think it might swing their swing their uh perception of me and might swing me in a different direction than what they might have planned. Uh but all I can do is win this fight and see what happens and um, play it by ear. And the Bellator merger now is after coming in. So I don't know what way what plans or ideas they have. So I'll just have to see how how they're thinking 
buzz about some bounce some ideas off them and see what happens really. You know, I was obviously reading your, your background and I found it interesting. You obviously, you know, you were working full time at Aldi, not you know, not even that long ago. I'm just wondering, do you keep in touch with people that you've you've worked with previously? And if so, what do they make of your incredible rise, you know, over the last few years? Yeah, I keep in touch with a few of them. Um, one of my good mates from 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 Aldi, I, I, Aaron, I, I always talk to him. He's been, he 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 was really, uh, he was a really good friend to me, and and you know I've had a really good bond with him. I still talk to him, uh, frequently. You know what I mean? He's gonna be coming to the fight. Um, some other uh, some other people I work with are coming to the fight. Um, I stay in, I stay in contact with them as well. Um, just brief messages and stuff like that, and you know, how are you getting on, all that stuff. But uh, they think it's amazing, you know what I mean? Because when I was working in Aldi, <clears throat> and I don't, I, I obviously at the time they don't really know how good I am as a fighter. I'm just telling them how good I am. So sometimes it it can might come across a bit arrogant. That I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be in here. I should be doing this and should be doing that and blah blah blah. And I'm, I'm too good to be working in here and this now. And it comes across a bit arrogant. And I, I, I really do feel like on our. So how I stopped, how it came about me leaving Aldi. Like I remember, I was working in a in a certain shop, and they asked me to move to a different one. And I said, look, I kind of want to focus on my fighting career. So and as a manager at the time, so I was like, can I do? Can I maybe sit down as a manager and do less hours and focus on this? Or like I'll 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 still give one hundred and ten percent every everything that goes with it. And they were like, yeah, yeah, we we'll look after, we we'll look after, and blah blah blah. I moved this store, didn't get the promise that I was I was asked. Oh, I I didn't get the promise I asked for, and then like it became a little bit bitter for me, which then ended up kind of you know making me a little bit sour uh, towards walking there, and I I really made the the decision then to just pack it in and. Since then, like now, I think they're all really seeing all the the shit talking I was doing about how good I was has really come to fruition, and they really un now they understand. All right, this kid wasn't just fucking like you know talking out of his arsehole, and he was really uh he was really put putting the work in. So like I was I was winning high level fights while winning a while while with a full time job, and like I the, I I always had doubts in my head going into the fights because I worked because I knew some people were training full time. And I was only like a little part time full uh, professional MMA fighter. If I could get to one session a day, I'd be great. You know what I mean? But um, look, they they they're happy for me, and that's the main thing. And the 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 leap of faith I took seems to has has seems to have worked. And yeah, I'm just grateful that I had the balls to do it because I was shitting me jocks for a week before I ended up leaving. I I remember I fought on Bellator on the Friday. I was on such a high. I was back in Aldi on that Monday. You know what I mean? And it just reality just smacked me in the face and I got brought down to, to normality again. But, you know, when I went back in, I just said, you know, because I got a taste of fighting in the tree arena. I got a taste of the, the real pro life. And I was like, you know, I, I can't do this anymore. So then I ended up leaving and, you know, best thing I ever done. Incredible, incredible. So, you know, I, I I read on, obviously, and uh, I wanted to really ask you about John Kavanagh. And there's a bit in your story where you say you were at a real low and then you obviously, you you managed to get in contact with, with John Kavanagh. How important is he, you know, behind, uh, you know, the, the last few years of your career? Yeah, uh, very important because when I joined, when I text John, like, I was so afraid to text him. I don't know why. I really don't know why. I was really nervous to text him. Obviously, I was I was at a point in my life where my mental health was in the gutter. I was abusing, drinking drugs, and I was just I was in a bad state of mind. I took a break from fighting, and and I, I just went downhill. And I really thought that the only way for me to get out of this was to do this was to, to get back into MMA. And I was trying to find my fits around the place, and I just. When I thought of SBG, I was getting kind of goosebumps and butterflies in my stomach, like that nervous feeling. And I went with my gut. I felt like this is where I need to go if I'm feeling this way. Get out of the comfort zone and put myself in the deep end because they have a really high level team of pros and, and all of them are, a lot of them are around my way. So I text John and he said, you know, you're more than welcome down any time. Um, and you know, initially he, I, I really respected this as well. They, they didn't uh, They didn't push me into fighting straight away. They, they they let me develop for a year or so. I got you know, obviously I had to start small. I, I won a won a uh won a fight on a local show, knocked the guy out in nine seconds, then I got a big opportunity for a title fight against Shamrock, who was six and oh, a lot of hype behind him and 
you know, it was up to me to be the one to step in and face him when no one else would fight him. And I think after that, John was really like, right, this kid has it. Because, cause, cause, like, he was the man to be in, around the area at the time and no one would fight him. And I, I had the balls to take the fight. So I think John learned a lot about me since then. And ever since then, you know, I've just... He, he's been really looking out for me, making sure that I'm getting uh, getting the right training in, getting... um getting uh, good opportunities and he's just a really good man to have behind you and supporting you. I feel like he has he has a presence about him that's really respected and almost if you're on his team you're gonna get you're gonna get treated well as well. So I'm really happy to be a part of the team and grateful for everything he's done for me this far. And just last one for me, uh Nathan just one on uh, on fight sports in, in Ireland just generally speaking because there's so many Irish fighters on this card the sport is thriving over in Ireland. I'm just wondering how much of an impact do you think somebody like uh, obviously Conor McGregor, who went, obviously done it all, done it big over in the UFC, how much of an impact do you think he's had behind the the rise of MMA in Ireland and, and perhaps on yourself as well? Yeah, so obviously McGregor was was like fucking me. Like uh, I remember when I was like, when I when he first joined the UFC, I I I was like a kid at Christmas, you know what I mean? When he joined the UFC, I was so excited and he gave me this sense of belief in myself that I can follow in the same footpaths. And I obviously I'm not the only person who who he gave that belief to, and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people around the country have had that same uh same um in motivation and he's gotten them into the sport so without him I think half the people fighting today probably wouldn't even be fighting you know what I mean they probably wouldn't have especially from Ireland they probably wouldn't have thought that they'd have made it this far because we're such a small nation and you never really seem to have any big opportunities on ma major organisations before then but um, yeah he's had a big big impact on Irish MMA and the growth of it and he's kind of paved the way for the likes of myself now to come in and you know, I'm I'm only twenty six now. I'm kind of coming into, you know, the the, even though I'm midway through, I'm this is gonna be my eleven pro fight. But I feel like I'm only beginning my journey really now as a pro because I'm really getting into the swing of things, especially in an in an established organization. So now it's up to kind of like me and the other lads around Ireland to lead the way for the next generations and show that we can still keep this fucking cycle of fighters and produce this cycle of fighters out of Ireland. For many years to come, like the and I'm grateful in the sense that like some of the coaches that we have now, you know, they've they've learned from scratch and and they had to learn the hard way. So we're in a position now where we're we've learned from all their mistakes and they're passing this information down to us. So then, when, by the time if I go to coach when I'm older, I'll have learned all their wisdom. Maybe I'll have learned my own mistakes, and then I can pass through onto the next generation. So I think kind of start kick started this this cycle of fighters, and now it's just to us. It's up to us as like fight on all the like not even just me, obviously all the other lads who are from Ireland and whatever like that to to keep the cycle going and really like invest invest time into pr like promoting and getting people into the sport and and really trying to build um you know a, another stable of Irish uh, athletes in the near future. Brilliant, brilliant. Before I forget, do you think he'll fight in, in 2024, Conor McGregor? Um, I'd say he will. I, I, he seems to be flat out training um, from what I could see on his Instagram page and he seems to be in great spirits and have great energy. So I want to see him fight, obviously. You know what I mean? I'd love to see him uh, get back in and hopefully it's sooner rather than later because I, uh, I love when El Conor fight. You know what I mean? It's always be a bit of crack. Yeah, yeah, like the build up does always be brilliant, you know what I mean? Um so yeah, I'd 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 love to see him in sooner rather than later. So fingers crossed they can get that done and we can all uh, all those MMA fans can enjoy a good night of fighting.